Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm just gonna be going over some of the new DaVinci Resolve 17 updates. Primarily, I'm just gonna be focusing on the color page. So first up, we have a couple new tools, the first of which is called the Color Warper. Basically, this tool is just like taking the vector scope and then giving you full access to grab any point on that scope and just move it around however you see fit. So you can see visually where these hues sit and then change their saturation and hue based on where you push and pull each point. Not only that, but you can change how these points are divided. You can lock certain points. So there's tons of different ways to use this tool. I've already experimented with it a little bit and it's really incredible. I've been kind of hoping for some kind of tool like this for years and DaVinci just took my expectations and blew them out of the water. So the next tool they've added is called the Magic Mask and I think this one also has a lot of potential. I'm still figuring out when exactly it'll come in handy but essentially it just uses AI to automatically track people or human features and then you can go in and make changes the same way you would with any other mask and next up we have some new color management controls now this won't mean much to most of us since I'm sure 99% of us are going to be editing in a rec 709 space but in the off chance that you are working with HDR footage this is going to open up a whole lot of doors you'll be happy to hear that they have not only added new controls into managing your color pipeline but there's also apparently a new color space that is created by DaVinci and it's called DaVinci wide gamut one of the most interesting things about it is that it's actually bigger than most other HDR color spaces, such as Rec 2020 or HLG. So this means you can sort of future-proof your projects and better optimize them for all kinds of flexibility later on. So another cool feature I'm pretty excited about is the three new white modes they have introduced into the live viewer. Now, whenever you hit play still, you're gonna notice three new tabs in the top right corner. There's now diagonal blinds and checkerboard options whenever you're playing your stills. There's a lot of times where I have to go in and change the input sizing just to view what I'm trying to see on my reference still. So this is gonna save a lot of time in those instances. So we also have a pretty interesting update with a scopes panel. This one is great for me because I'm using two monitors. I have an ultra wide down below and an LG B9 up top. In the future, I'll probably add on to the setup by adding a scope box and probably have my scopes on a separate external display. But for now, I just use the built-in Resolve scopes. So because of that, I'm pretty limited by what Resolve offers. However, they have added the option to view three by three instead of two by two on your scopes. One small complaint I had for the old software is that if you had four scopes open at the same time and it was extracted from the actual panel, there was no way to view all four scopes without blocking some element of your GUI. There's a little bit of a way to get around that in the new version. It's probably not orthodox, but it does work. You can set it to the three by three viewing method and then reduce the size as much as you can for that window, drag it to the right corner, and then you can view four scopes in a smaller window and it won't be blocking any of your other controls. Also now, if you pop out that window of your scopes, the button doesn't completely disappear and if you press it again, it'll just bring your scopes back into that lower section of the viewer. Resolve 17 is also rolling out an all new curve and this time it is a sat versus luma curve. So this curve, instead of changing the saturation levels based on your luminance, it lets you change the luminance based on your saturation. There's not a whole lot of times I would use it, but I think the few times I will, it'll actually come in handy. Another huge update for a lot of you LUT lovers is... <laughs> can't believe I'm saying that, is that they've added a new LUT library. Now you can tell Resolve where to search for your LUTs. You don't have to bring your LUTs into any predetermined folder. You can just tell Resolve where to find them and then they'll auto-populate in your LUTs tab. And then you can also locate them in the contextual menus in the notes tab. Another couple small details I found worth mentioning is that the open effects have had a slight facelift. Uh, they all have their own little icon now, which looks a little bit better. And then the settings, you'll notice they've changed a little bit as well, nothing major. And then they also moved the timeline viewer toggle button that was for some reason in the left-hand corner. They moved that right next to the clips button, which is where I think it should have been all Long. Don't know why it wasn't there in the first place, but props to Black Magic for fixing that. But that's it for me, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.